How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to discuss eight key terms and technologies with regards to brushless motors. All right, we are going to discuss eight of the most important, most confusing aspects of brushless motors. If you're new here, this is RC Review. What we do is try to educate you, share our information, and learn from you guys. If you click on an A main link in our description, anything you buy within 15 days will help out our channel. And important as well is subscribe and even more important is hit that notify button so you get informed when we publish new content like this one. Okay, brushless motors is so important, but there's about eight areas of it that are so confusing that we want to demystify them for you. We're not gonna go too deep. We'll probably make a video for each one. We're just gonna give you a, a surface most important bullets on these issues. All right, the first issue we are gonna demystify is the term KV. KV is similar to turn in brush motors. In brushes, we have this term called KV, 3300 KV, 2700 KV. What the heck does it mean? Very confusing because KV traditionally means kilovolt or a thousand volts. But in brushes motors, it means something completely different. KV means constant, constant with a K, constant one volt. How many RPMs, revolutions per minute, will this spin if we give it one volt? So 3300 KV means it's gonna spin at 3300 RPM if we give it one volt. So if we give it 10 volts, it's gonna spin at 33,000. So the more KV, the faster it's gonna spin at a given voltage. And you just multiply the voltage that you use with your battery um, for this motor. The next issue we're gonna handle is censored versus censorless. Okay, so in the old days, censoredless was what uh, was used. So when they, they, when they don't specify, it's probably censoredless. Censored has come about uh, lately. It's got a, a fourth wire. Sen Brushless has three wires, so there's a fourth wire, but the fourth wire has six wires in there. So here it is. So these two are censored and this is sensorless. And what's happening with censored motors is there was a need to give it more modulation, more control, and more torque at very low RPM. So if you have a very low RPM application, you want a censored motor. More specifically, it's crawlers. Crawlers, you always want a censored solution. So a sensorless is everything else that doesn't care about low speed control, low speed modulation is sensorless. So if you want control in the low RPM, go censored. So why would you use sensorless? Sensorless is cheaper. It doesn't have that wire, it doesn't have that all that technology here, less things can go wrong, and it has more punch. It's more efficient because it's not too concerned about understanding where the where the rotor is uh, exactly. It, it just gives it punch. So this is more punchy. Uh, the good news with these expensive sensor solutions is they usually use sensor at the low RPM and then when they get you know to a very uh, high RPM between I don't know 5,000 to 50,000 RPM they go to a sensorless mode of operation. Next subject I'll tackle is the difference between a, an in-runner motor and an outrunner motor. So this is an outrunner motor. Uh, in-runner motor is really a normal motor. So whenever they don't specify uh, what kind of motor this is, it's probably an in-runner. So in-runner is this traditional, the, the, inside, uh, the inside spins, uh, the case is fixed and the inside will spin uh, and disconnect to your gears or your prop. Uh, an outrunner motor, the outside can spins. And the big difference between the two is uh, the outside is uh, where the magnets are. So because the magnets are outside, um, it has more torque, more room for magnets, uh, and it's, it has a better uh, angle of inertia, so it, it produces more torque. In applications where you want more torque, more low speed torque, outrunner motors are good, but they don't, they're not ideal for high RPM applications. You know, you know, think about the outside of the spinning 50,000 RPM. It, uh, 
Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's not ideal for that, so we usually use an in-runner for that. Also, in a outrunner motor, the, the inside, because that's where the electromagnets are, uh, is what heats up. Uh, here, the outside heats up. Because here, the outside heats up, it's automatically cooled by the case. Put a fan on it if, if needed. Over here, you can't really cool the inside of it. Uh, so what they had to do is they had to open it up. Uh, the, you know, ventilation uh, allows it to get cooled. So that this makes it less ideal for uh, rough conditions, muddy conditions, a lot of water. Uh, this is more ideal for that kind of application. But the fourth subject I'd like to talk about is one of motor sizing. Very confusing. Uh, and I finally demystified it uh, just researching the subject because you, we have these motors called 540 motors, 540, and this is a 550, and 540. Uh, but then when you get to different sizes, they come up with all these other numbers like 3650, 5274. What the heck do these things mean, right? So 540, uh, in the old brushed world, where's my brush motor? Uh, they had a 540 motor, so when they went uh, and made brushless versions of it, they called it 540 as well. So 540 uh, refers to the length around 54 millimeters. This one should then be 55 millimeters, right? But it's really more like 56, 57, or 550 long. Um, pretty strange. So where it gets confusing is when they got to different sizes, they, they, uh, they started using four numbers, numbers like 24, 35. And 24 refers to the, the, the width of it, and 35 refers to the length of it. So a motor, so anything other than a, a, a 540, they use the four numbers. So this motor says 42.74. So the, the width of it is 42 millimeters and the length is 74. So in general, in tenths, this is a 10 scale motor. They use a width of the 540s, they use a width of about 36. On one eight scale, they use a width of around 40. Uh, one seventh, about 45. And the one fifth scale, the new big ones, Hands like this, there's about 56 millimeters. Up. The next subject I'd like to talk about is one of shaft size. So this shaft size is this one right here. This one is a shaft of around three millimeters. Uh, and this one is five millimeters. You can see the difference. That's a five and that's a three. And it's very important uh, when you're buying a pinion. Uh, a pinion gear, this one right here, uh, they're very specific to the shaft size. So the next subject I want to talk about is the voltage limits of a motor. Uh, I always thought, ah, oh, 3S, you know, this is a 3S system that the motor you can only, it can only handle 3S. As it turns out, uh, the voltage limits, the motor doesn't really have voltage limits. It's the ESC that has firm voltage limits. So this is a 3S ESC. So if I had a, a big boy ESC, so this one right here is a 6S ESC, I can use this ESC with this motor. Kind of confusing, huh? So all these motors, you know, I use 2S, maybe 3S for this. They can handle 4S, 5S, 6S, whatever. So what they're gating item really is not the voltage. Um, it is basically the, the heat. They can handle any, any, any voltage, even 8S maybe, but they're gated by two items. The heat, you don't, you never, uh, you never want a motor to get hot, 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and the RPM. So a lot of them, they can go 50,000 RPM, some can go 100,000 RPM. So if you plug enough voltage in these little motors, they can probably go 150,000 RPM, then they will, they will break, okay? So just remember, the voltage is limited by your ESC, and as long as you monitor your RPM and your, your temperature, you can put a much stronger, um, ESC on your and more more <laughs> more voltage into the same motor. Into the number seven, second to the last subject is the importance of temperature. Uh, temperature is really the uh, the heartbeat of these motors. So 
uh, and a lot of these motors, they don't have a, a shutoff. Uh, when you have a shutoff, it's really the, the ESC that is shutting off. It knows its temperature. It says, hey, I don't want to get too hot. I'm going to shut off. But it doesn't really know what the motor, how hot the motor is. So you have to monitor the temperature of the motor yourself. And check this out. Has a fan, has a fan, no fan on these two guys. So what you need is a temp gun. It's about a $30 device, laser device. You point it at it and the, the, the bad area starts to happen, happen at around 170 degrees Fahrenheit. You want it around 130, 140 degrees uh, when it's, when, when it's um, you know, peak use, so to speak. So keep it there and how you uh, control that temperature is with your pinion. How much load are you putting on this motor uh, with the weight of the vehicle and your pinion gear. So if it's getting too hot, make your pinion gear smaller, make it work less. Uh, other ways you could do it is with a heat sink, something to monitor, especially when you have a new setup um, and or you're really uh, putting your vehicle and your motor through demanding conditions. Also, if you're in the winter, you know, maybe your temperature is quite, quite a bit lower uh, when it's freezing out there compared to when it's 100 degrees out there in the desert. So, so check your temperatures again during the hottest parts of the year. And finally, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the emerging technologies of brushless motors. There's a lot going on here and we have some super interesting stuff. Uh, one is the two-in-one combination. So this is uh, the motor, the ESC. They have something called a Fusion, the Hobbywing Fusion. I think they're the first manufacturer to do it. They do it for Spectrum as well. So Spectrum benefits from this technology. But what they did was they put all this stuff in here. Um, <laughs> so you have a 540 motor and the last part is the ESC. So you have a two in one. So now if you have like a scale vehicle without a lot of room, now you have uh, a, a all in one solution. Right. So Another technology I want to discuss is something called FOC, field, field oriented control. And it's really uh, uh, yeah, a really good technology where the, the ESC, always talks to the, the, the motor. It knows what, how the motor is feeling based on, on, on current and voltage, how much power it's drawing. And I think if I understand this correctly, if it needs more, it's gonna give it more. Uh, that kind of, not only receiving, but it's like reacting to what the motor needs. So it doesn't even depend on the, on the, um, the sensored wire. Um, and what that allows you to do is you can just be on your transmitter, you could just be like this, and as the load of the, you're not, you're not moving your finger, as the load, the demands of the, the vehicle change, the ESC keeps adjusting, gives it more. So the speed is not changing uh, because the ESC is, is adjusting as it's going over obstacles. So there you go, eight terms and technologies in brushless motors. Let me know what I got wrong and what I'm missing. Uh, and where, which one I should do a deep dive in first. Thanks a ton.